Hello everyone, before going into today's video, I want you to know that I released on Mobile Fire a massive Talia guide with over 30 pages of content, over 40 matchups and over 30 synergies with information on runes, builds, win conditions, roaming, gang pets and much much more. You have the link in the description below and feel free to check it out whenever you need help and uh, leave an upvote if it did help you. I will also answer all the questions you have guys in the comments or on Discord or wherever you want and I'll also be there for you if you need me. Thank you very much and let's go to the video. Hello everyone, my name is Ramat and today we're going to do a tutorial on mid lane on how to play Tlia. Now I'm going to start quick with runes and builds, you'll have to go if you want to play like me for Electrocute, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Biscuit Delivery and Time Warp Tonic from the Inspiration Tree, and for rune stats 2 or for ability power and 1 for health or magic resist or armor depending on what the enemy is. For builds I usually go Ludens on mid lane, then Sork Shoes, so where is it, Ludens, then Shork Shoes under the shoes, then probably going for Orb. Then either Void Stuff or Rabadons based on how fed I am or Zonias if I am in need of that in matchups that require that. Sometimes you can go Zonia faster, sometimes you can play with other items. For that I recommend you to check my general guide on Tlia on Mobafire. You're going to understand there, there are all the patterns that I employ in this kind of matchups and videos. Now, for starter items I go as you see here for Doran's Ring and, uh, so sorry, for Corrupting and sometimes I go for Doran's Ring depending on the matchup uh, or and depending on how I feel generally, I want to get that, okay. And uh, I recommend for you to try both and see whichever you like more. There are different play styles and I think both have their own, uh, both have their own powers. Now, I missed two CS here, that's not okay, you should generally focus in lane on two things, on poking the enemy and focus on CS, that's until level two and a half, three actually, sometimes, uh, because then you have to worry about ganks, most champions do not have level two gank opportunities, but uh, some do, like Jarvan or Gragas, if he wants to, but Gragas not that much, but there are some others, I don't know, there are cheese ganks, so you have to be careful about that too. But normally you should farm early and you should get your QWE and then start to try using the combo on the enemy champion. If uh, he allows you to, as in if he's not someone with dashes or something like that. If he has dashes then you have to play more uh, different as I can say. Okay. I found mastery. That was a very late flash from that rise and normally he would have lived but he did a bad flash there so okay. Sorry for not talking over this scenario, normally uh, you have to ward and to check where the enemy jungler is. In this particular case he was at Scuttle, basically you will see the enemy jungler most of the time around Scuttle when it spawns. So a ward here early game you can see him at frights after he goes blue or red or a ward around here so you can cover this area so you're safe. That, <laughs> that was illegal, I got damage and still went out. Okay, normally on the first back you want to finish your book if you can, you want to get a vision ward if you can, but most probably you're going to focus on getting this item first, you have to get boots and vision wards obviously. Now whenever you're playing with time or tonic like me, remember to use your biscuits and corrupting potion at the same time when the enemy jungler or mid laner engages on you. And now I'm gonna ping here because this guy misses. It's not here and we don't know where he is. Also, when farming, focus mostly on getting the cannon minion. I think that's the most obvious thing, but it's a very strong tip and you should consider that. You should always try to get the cannon minion so that you do not lose that many gold. Now here I farm badly because I focus on giving you the tips that uh, will allow you to get better. Uh, but normally I think I'm doing far more greater than this. I missed so much CS. Also difference between Corrupting Potion and Dorans. Dorans give you some damage against minions. 
if I recall correctly, exactly, that's 5 damage against minions, which is extremely useful if you suck at farming. So remember that you can go Doran String for extra survivability, or you can go Corrupting Potion for extra sustain. There is a main difference between sustain and survivability, but we will not go into that. We're more interested in getting kills on lane. I do believe that Corrupting Potion is for more experienced players, as you'll have less auto attack damage, and in turn, you're going to deal less damage. Now here I'm staying to see if Rise is there. Uh, I, okay, I was focusing. I focus on multiple things at once and I can do mistakes and so I have to be careful. Now, when you don't have flash in a case such as this, uh, you have to be careful for ganks from that mastery or for whoever it is. If he has no CC you're going to be safe or safer or if he has low damage then again you might be safe. Kain early game for example is a champion that doesn't deal that much damage and until he gets his evolution he will be quite weak so you can play a little bit more aggressive but against some other champions you have to be careful. Now here is a good opportunity to use my W but I failed and another opportunity that you can see here is going bot because now Tilius or Yi seems to play over aggressively and this is some farm that I can get here. Okay, I'm gonna get... I did not get that guy. Okay, I really hoped that Brand would hit stun, but it was eventually worth it. Now, Ryze is missing, but he did not do anything important, and we got Kane a kill. It was a bad slash good trade overall but he got so much farm there from her which is not fair in fairness anyway let's not uh, go away from the point the, uh, the general build I believe you understood you have to complete sword shoes after Ludens in general and then orb void stuff get all the uh, magic penetration that you need usually void stuff after sork is good especially if they build uh, if they build magic resist but uh, if you are extremely far ahead I suggest other routes such as uh, such as uh, an early Zonia as well if you feel like needing but it's up to debate okay now we got the fed cane mostly he's fed because of us so you can you can feel a sense of pride and accomplishment for the ones who know the memes uh, but yeah normally that's a good thing now you're gonna see a lot of people that play with Teleport, Syndras, Rise players and Akali maybe or so many more mages. Uh, normally you'd want after you get the kill to push the lane if there is no jungler nearby, the enemy jungler. Normally you'd want every time to put the CS into their tower and to create a safe space uh, so that the minions can go there but you have to be careful after getting a kill you're probably going to be low HP so you have to consider that fact and, and you also have to think about okay I'm going here and now this is a good bait for us but he probably knows about So yeah, when you're playing against face rush, all your hopes and dreams of hitting a W can be enabled just by going GLP and using it at the right time. So against face rush, okay, good. It's fine. 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 I got the flash. What? What is he doing? Ah, uh, I did not lose Ignite there for the purpose that he will get the kill, but apparently it was not the case. Do not do what I just did here. Play smarter than me. Okay. I cannot help you, buddy. And I lost CS there. Anyway, this is the main tips for the early game. I think I will stay till I reach my uh, Ludens. 
And normally these times are going to suck until you're going to get Ludens and against most matchups like Assassins you're going to have a bad time on mid lane. But arguably you can be useful and you can win most 2 vs 2 with your jungler I believe. That's one of Tulia's strongest points, winning 2 vs 2s with your jungler, especially if your jungler is not one that's uh, bad. Because junglers, I mean early game jungler, okay, you want something that's early to mid game jungle, not something like Kane, that doesn't work, but in this case works because we had the upper hand, but you get the point. Someone who can set up your W works, you can see the example, this is for micro by the way, you can see the example on uh, Kenyon's Tlia, every time Kenyon picks Tlia, Showmaker uh, goes for Renekton and it's just too good to Leah jungle with Renekton stun. Now the reverse also works, interestingly enough. I have gold for Ludens, but I think I will stay one more wave. The reverse also works, you can play to Leah mid and your jungler can be something like Ramus or Rengar something with a stun, with a dash, with a root, something that can help you set up your W. And if you do set up that W, odds are the enemy champion will most likely die. So, is a cannon wave. Normally I would not recall in this point, ah, okay he pushes. We're going to wait for the canyon waves because whenever there is a cannon you want to get it as it is. Why is Rise not going to help? I mean, okay, we won. I hope he doesn't do Drake here. Okay, so I don't know what I was saying because I got so distracted by... I really hope he doesn't. Don't, don't do anything. Don't back off, back off. Thank you. So, don't recall when there is a minion or cannon wave unless you are in immediate danger to die. So that's another major thing. Sometimes you can go for the red trinket. Why did Kane int there? And we just lost Drake if they are smart. But we don't know that exactly. Okay. So yeah, this is for the early game and the mid lane mostly. Mid game, sorry. Uh, okay, this rise dies a, focuses a bit too much on poking me and forgets to check his own damage. Normally, matchups that mages that don't have a lot of damage are your friend. And you would love these matchups because you can abuse your WQ combo, but if he has face rush, then it becomes more difficult. I'm gonna word this whole two words nice. I think there's a rise. There's no rise. We just seen him on mid lane. If they still that I literally worked on that minion. Okay, do not use your ultimate like that, I just got pissed there. But most probably when someone takes your uh, scuttle, it gets annoying, especially if you waste a lot of mana on it. But yeah, I'm not pissed, I'm fine, I'm good, we're going to focus now. Anyway, as you can see here, because Ryze upgraded his boots early, we have a relatively hard time getting that... Uh, getting that uh, W out, so you will focus mostly on hitting that Q. Uh, as you've seen there, okay we got it, Ooh. is he coming, is he still coming, he's not coming. So whenever you feel that you're a bit ahead, you can get way more ahead if you just use your Q instead of relying on an all-in W, as is this case. Like, Ryze has a lot of damage, but he's not there yet where he can solo me, okay? And a Ryze that can solo you will do that later on, not right now in the current moment of the game. So we have to focus on killing him just with Qs. Now he kind of walked around pretty bad compared to other Ryze players. But normally, if you want to kill him with phase rush, you have just to focus on the, you have just to focus on your Q as I did. And now I will not pick GLP because I dislike it greatly. I believe Ludens is amazing for push for everything else. Uh, and now I do not want it. I'm just throwing random. Ah, 
Ah, he lived. I'm just throwing random W's around in hopes that I can catch something. You should try that. Uh, but I think we're losing first tower. Oh, we got first tower on bot, sorry. Okay. That was a very bad. Ooh, what's this? Doesn't engage. This is fair enough for getting that scot that crap. <laughs> the gold is okay. Should I go bot and alt? I will see mastery on the map now. In mid game, I kind of stopped the tutorial because I was not talking anymore. But in mid game, we're interested mostly in going for those alts from a side lane or going from the mid lane to the side lane and get some kills there. That's an amazing thing that you can do and whenever you do that you should play careful. So in this context this is a free kill because their bot lane for some reason thought they could actually kill us 2 versus 2. Now they did probably not think that there was a 2 versus 2 going on. But in the moment that they engaged on Vladimir, I just ulted and we got a free double kill there. Most people will not think in macro terms like that, so you have to you have the advantage when playing Talia, when playing Twisted Fate. Uh, because those champions in lower elos have extreme macro display, uh, because you can just ult to a lane and they will have no idea what's happening. So that's pretty good, I mean, that's why this champion should be attractive to you, but then again there might be other options such as Pantheon or Twisted Fate again, or I don't know, early on Soul. So yeah, but in general, uh, you should try to create this uh, this two versus two, three versus two, four versus two moments in which you alt a lane and you create this advantage. That's for the mid game, okay? So we covered the early game with those micro farming trades, with vision words, with some fights, with two versus twos. In the mid game. Or even in early game, you have to ult bot when you feel that there is an opportunity to get a kill, and you have to go for it. You have to, okay, you have to get the kill there. Now I'm going to get a stopwatch here, even though I might not necessarily need it, but we have a bounty on our heads, so that's a good indicator that we might need a stopwatch, uh, especially if it's a big bounty like 1k, <laughs> 1 k, one or 700, or okay. Uh, but in general, if I were a bit more fed than that, then. I would not care uh, mostly about dying, I would probably go for Rabadons at this point. And then again now we just follow, just we just go for the trades that gives us advantage, we create these trades and there might be, okay, there might be rise but we don't care. So normally in mid game to be successful you have to have Kind of the same farm as the enemy mid laner, that's a good player, if the enemy mid laner is not a roamer. Uh, or if he's a roamer, you have definitely to have more farm than him and more ganks, so to be the better player. Okay, please don't stun me, you stun me. What's happening here? And normally you should care about these kind of lanes too, because... Well... Just, just go away. Okay, so you go bot and then they die mid and then you go mid and then die, they die bot. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a constant nefarious circle. Now I want to not be flanked here, so I'm gonna word. Oh, okay, he went in. But there is an Autilius waiting around and we have to account for that. And you just died. Okay. Can you not tint please? Okay. Uh, you're not 
escaping. You're not escaping, buddy. Gonna follow you, buddy. Gonna follow you, buddy. Okay, so yeah. You have to get fed if you can. And you have to abuse that if you can. Uh, but if you cannot, normally, and well, if players are of the same skill, uh, you should focus on farming and creating disadvantages on the map without losing farm that much on your lane or without losing an objective. So whenever I say you roam, you would want to roam in such a way that you pushed your lane, you went bot, you got a kill or a double kill, and then you either recall instantly because the enemy mid laner will get your plates or get plates from there to create that uh, solution. Does anyone have heals, heal away and mastery? Yeah, in this case. Or should we go? No, this is fine. Because they have sort of some heals. Okay. And now we're getting Baron. Every time you get a kill after the mid game, or towards the mid to late game, or even in early game if you're ahead enough, you can create worlds to get Barons, or you can just go Baron after you kill someone by trapping them or by catching them. Well, normally I'd go bot here, but I also want to get this from my jungler, because he has to get mid lane, so it's fair enough. So, an important thing to get Baron, obviously, that's the main objective that you'd want. Uh, but uh, do it in such a way that there is no risk that the enemy team will steal it. So that's another major, major ma macro fact that you have to be careful about. And now I have here a lot of farm, but as you can see my kill participation is 4, 8 times bigger than Rise. So basically by playing around the map and I played a lot around the map and I still have the high CS Normally, Ryze should have had more CS than me at this point, way more, because I went and moved around the map. Whenever you roam, you roam to a lane when there are players, so those players will usually have priority to the CS. So normally, oh, they are fighting. Oh my god, what is this? I don't have stopwatch, and we int it. I am confused of why this, why they, why they joined this fight because it was clearly not a good example of anything. But yeah, normally, normally you'd want to go for, okay, for this kind of builds and this kind of trades. Not this one in particular. This one you just don't join because Kain inted, Brand inted, Vladimir inted, and as I was, I came here to give a huge bounty to whoever I did. And Ryze will now start to deal a lot of damage, so you're not interested in trading the enemy mid laner now, okay? There is a very big difference between an early game Ryze and the mid game Ryze and the late game Ryze. So you have to know your opponent as well. We're going for the Zonias because there is a mastery that starts to get strong and also a Kaiser. And I am starting to be way more confused about Kane. But he is doing pretty fine apparently so so that is that even though he died okay I'm there I don't wanna ult there let's rise okay Actually got most of them low HP there. So now we win because I created a very good. Oh, what what is Jinx doing? <laughs> I created a very good opener for the Jinx, but well, they should have won that. I believe I believe Master G wins that. If he plays right, Vladimir should have no chance. He probably didn't cure right. Oh my god, this was a draw, really? Technically, because. Well, probably Vlad won, but we cannot consider it. But if if this guy was good, he would have won. Anyway. Why did we win last fight for a macro reference? Mostly because I caught both Rise 
and both rise and their support so there was no front line left for them for the kaiser and Ilawe was already a bit low and he was around Drake so we had the upper advantage in the cornering okay you can kill her instantly just kill her kill her Good. see how well they played this and now they are gone and this is the point where you should generally be careful when joining this fight I don't want to ult her and die okay I don't want to do that I can do that. I can go around, I can take picks. Normally you don't want to get a pick on that champion. Because he can probably kill you. But you do like farming, so go for the farm. Now I do have flash up, so I'm not really afraid of this Siloi. And even though he has magic resist and a lot of gold as well, because of the 200 farm. We're not really scared about it, but what I'm more scared about is this Kane trying to do anything against her. Now, against that uh, that Eloy with double magic resist items such as Merc Threads and Spirit Visage, and also Nautilus item and probably more magic resist coming from him, you'd want that Void stuff now. Okay, this is the moment. I'm gonna put this Vision Word here. And I'm gonna back off to get my start of the Void stuff. Getting here Void stuff, it's a better decision than Rabadon's or Lyandry's. Because we want to actually deal damage towards their uh, their Ilawe. We want to think their Ilawe as a front line and also their, uh, Ilo their uh, Nautilus. And so it's very hard against those champions to pass the front line. Okay, It's more easy to actually kill it. Because you have a Jinx that if you peel, why they are pinging me? I got tilted and missed the cannon. So you get you get the point, I believe somehow. When you need your force to deal with the front line, you'd want to. Ooh, I was talking. And I'm also dealing massive amounts of damage like this, regardless. Please don't stun me, as I will die. Okay, this is a good place to hold. Okay. Come on. It's free. Why do you care about words when there are no champions to steal it? So, you've seen what I did in general. I one-shotted Master Reed, their main, basically, assassin. Well, Kaisa was far away, but there was an opportunity on that mastery, so I, go, I went for it. And then Eloy takes a lot of damage still because I'm very far ahead. If I wouldn't be this far ahead with all these items, I wouldn't deal any damage to Eloy, okay? So this voice stuff allows me to kill her whenever she'll get another magic resist item, or whenever they play, their players get another magic resist item. Now, there are three AP, a strong AP in this game. And because they did not build magic resist, we're winning so heavily and favored. Normally, you'd expect them to not build tabbies against this kind of uh, champions because they are they're just scared of the cane. But both Vladimir and Brand have tons of worse, and we are three people compared to two, so arguably we deal much more damage than they do. So look at this, okay? One shotting their super strong. Uh, champion that has a lot of everything and now we just win the game here and I did not get the kill for that so this is the general guide guys I think I gave a ton of tips here and if I did not give enough tips I believe you can answer I can answer some questions in the description below so just in the comments sorry so just ask me whenever you need something now if I said some wrong things please correct me and if I did not or if I said some things that were not clear enough please leave me a message or join my discord or read my guide and follow these steps uh, I believe Tulia is a very strong champion on jungle mainly but can also be used on mid I believe there are some other champions such as Pantheon which is permaband on uh, 
onwards but uh, in general with proper setup and some thinking this champion can be really strong in some compositions but it's hard to pick her as an OTP in every matchup okay so do not expect if you pick the Leah to kill all the Katarinas and all the Zeds and all the Yasuos because it will not happen and sometimes their enemy jungler will be better than yours and you will have problems obviously so focus on the tips that I usually preach or give and ask me if you have other tips if you have other questions sorry and uh, yeah I believe this is the general guide to Lee I hope you liked it so see you next time guys and goodbye